Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today with another Stamp Timber project. This is the Ink Blot Shop Life is an Adventure stamp set. This is an exclusive limited edition for 2020 from Simon Says Stamp for their Stamp Timber event. This is an awesome four by five and three quarter inch clear stamp set. And I am gonna share how I am taking an image and doing a simple extended scene card for a slimline design. I've been sharing a lot of slimline projects and I originally kind of thought I might do an A2 sized card. Everything works great for an A2 sized card, especially I think if you wanna do maybe a landscape style card. But I really wanted to showcase how you can take images, especially because I just, on accident, I had a slimline nested rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp laying out. And I had laid all of these out on an A2 size card. And on accident, I kind of just laid them there. And I was like, they, they would fit a slimline design. Wouldn't that be fun? Because I have to admit, I was a little, I was struggling a little bit with placement for my sentiments. And I realized if I kind of shifted everything over, it would give me space either on the left or the right to put a couple of sentiments from the stamp set, which is what I wanted to do. So I'm starting with this slimline nested rectangle from Heavyweight Smooth White Cardstock. We're stamping our images with Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink, and then I'm stamping second generation stamping on masking paper. I'm using a lot of scraps of masking paper. Um, I always keep all those little bits and pieces and just put them in a little file folder because they come in handy for almost everything. And then we're gonna mask everything on this card. So I think I told you guys a couple days ago, I can't remember which video I, I said this in, I've done so many this month, but I need to stop saying that I don't like to fussy cut because I fussy cut a lot this month. And I'm actually really, really loving it because you can get some very different looks than you can get when you use the coordinating dies. I do believe there are coordinating dies that you can get with this um, if you want to. So you can get the stamp set only or the coordinating dies. So the border image from this Life is an Adventure stamp set is what we are going to be creating our simple extended scene with. And that is because this really actually would fit an A2 sized card. So I'm gonna start over here on the left side of the panel and we're gonna stamp that and then we're going to stamp it again on some masking paper because we need a mask for the little camping tent and those great little trees. But with a little creative masking and stamping, we can extend that across the entire length of a slimline card. And that is what I really wanted to kind of showcase today, how easy it can be to create a custom card with one image. Um, or a custom landscape with one image. You don't have to, you know, try to piece it together or draw it in or whatever the case might may be. I don't want the tint twice, but I want the little border and I want some of those trees because that's really gonna add some interest and it's also gonna serve as the perfect spot to frame up my sentiment. When I laid it out, when I decided, yes, let's go ahead and go for the slimline card and I laid out my sentiments and the stamps and everything, I realized that my sentiments, especially the, the shorter phrase of the two I'm gonna to use today, fits between those those pine trees perfectly, and I'm, or evergreen, I don't know what kind of trees those are. Cute little trees out in our forest for our uh, campsite. It's gonna fit between those, which is what I was looking for here. I'm really excited about this because I feel like that just lends itself perfect as the a great place to add a sentiment. I did kind of didn't cut my mask quite right, so I had to cut an extra little piece there because I am going to ink the background and I didn't want to get any of my blue ink in that little spot because we'll color in that bottom portion in in a little bit. So here I'm gonna lay out the stamps so you can see that they nestle in between those trees perfectly. And then up above is the perfect spot to do some clouds and a moon, all the good stuff to finish this off. Now there are stars in this stamp set. Um, I think I used everything in this stamp set, in fact, today. 
except for the reach for the star sentiment, which is kind of funny, um, and maybe one star image. The stars are so small. I really, I really don't like to mask anything that's super teeny tiny because it's really hard to get a good mask. These clouds and the moon are about as small as I personally like to go. And I knew because I'm kind of creating this nighttime camping scene, I did want to implement those stars. We have a lot of nice white space in this design. You can see here we've got the, the two kid images and we've got our border along the bottom and then a few small, you know, accessory type images to build this scene. But we have a lot of nice white space and that's great for adding in some stars. So I decided that when I stamp and emboss my sentiments on top of the inking after I've done that, I can go in and add some stars and that will really be fun. They'll have a nice bright white outline. I think they'll show up really nice and that eliminates the need for masks. So I did stamp a couple of the clouds. In fact, I stamped both of the clouds twice. Two of them are with the moon and then two more kind of out on the sides to just kind of balance it all out nicely. Once we have our masking done, it is time to ink up the background. Everything is masked and ready to go, which is super important. And we are going to take some peacock feathers and chipped sapphire distress inks and ink up this panel. I'm going to speed this up pretty quick because it is a lot of surface area and I went really dark with my color because I wanted that moody nighttime type of scene here where the lighter colors down near the horizon line and darker up in the sky. But you're gonna see, I'm gonna pull chipped sapphire down into peacock feathers and then I'm actually gonna finish my card by going back over the background with peacock feathers up in the chipped sapphire. And it's so super messy, but this is the beauty of masking. So this is what I was talking about, how I need to say I, I don't enjoy fussy cutting, which I don't, but I enjoy the look a lot. It eliminates that white outline around your images. So I know I've heard from a lot of you over the years that some of you really don't like the white outline you get from your stamped images when you use the coordinating die. And you know, it doesn't really bother me that much, except for when you go and create a card with masking and you see how awesome and seamless it looks. I do particularly love how cards turn out when you don't have that little white outline around all the images, especially for a scene like this. I think it just looks really, really, really good. I'm using some tweezers and I'm just pulling off my masks. There are a few spots around the images where I did not get my mask trimmed really great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I'll just do is take a blue marker and we'll just kind of draw around the image. It doesn't bother me that much enough to put the mask back in place and try to re-ink it simply because I'm always afraid I'm going to get ink on the image and ruin all of that and then have to do all of the stamping and masking work again, which I really don't wanna do. Because the landscape along the bottom is so small, I just use some Copic markers. I've listed the colors I'm using across the top of the screen and I'm gonna color that in. So we got YG93 and 95 for kind of the landscape, landscape or ground. And for our trees, we're gonna use a little combination and I will tell you, I noticed I missed a little spot inking. I didn't quite cut my mask correct around the tent. So I'm going to just kind of piece that together and ink it up. Um, the trees, they are YG 9597 and 99. And the first tree I colored, I kind of think I blended it a little bit too much. So I'm gonna to try to not blend out the rest of the trees so that they have a little bit more um, texture to them. And then I can go back to the first one I colored and hopefully add in a little bit more of that YG99 to give that tree a little more texture as well. What I love here is because there's one tree with the tent and then the two trees that are over to the right of the kids, 
And then we extended the scene just stamping the part that is the two, two trees. We end up with a total of five. And I love an odd number on a card with embellishments or images, whatever it might be. That really, for me, works so nicely because I think it balances it out really nice. Um, I'm a little surprised at myself that I didn't do like five clouds or three clouds. And I was only going to do three because I love the odd numbers, but I really felt like I needed to balance it out and they needed a cloud over on the left side because I had the three over on the right and really needed that one over on the left. And the moon kind of balances it that balances it out and makes five things up in the sky. Plus we're going to be adding some stars, um, some confetti, so that will help as well. I'm coloring in the skin now and hair. I tried to go in sections at least when I got started. As, um, as I started coloring in their clothing and things, I kind of skipped around a little bit more. But when I first started, I did skin and hair. With the hair, I really don't want to blend out too much. In fact, I don't think I quite blended out enough and I ended up going back with my markers that I'm using for hair. So for her, I'm using E53, 55, and 57. And I went back and feathered in a little bit more just to give a little more texture to that hair. And maybe not have quite as large of a highlight area. And then for him, I'm gonna use E000, 11, 13, and R20 for the skin and cheeks. And then we're only going to use the two lightest colors for the hair for his to give him some blonde hair. So E53 and 55. And I think it's really fun to see what a difference just eliminating one marker color makes. I know I've been asked a lot, especially here recently, as I've been sharing a lot more cards with Copic markers about how to build your stash. If you're new to Copic markers, I know we have a lot of new people. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, I have definitely built my collection up over the years. I've had these markers for a long time, um, probably about 10 years now at least. Uh, and I started really small. I would buy them on sale at Hobby Lobby. I'd use the coupon. I'd buy them on sale. Um, eventually as, as they dried out, I would buy the refills so I could refill them. But I even, even yet, I do not have every color that they have ever made. And some of the best advice I can give for if you're looking to build your stash is buy colors that go together. You will notice that I'm, I always group them together when I'm listing them on the screen. I purposely pick two to three colors per section that go together and that is how to buy them so that you can use them together. Because if you buy in sets, a lot of times they just pick from all over the rainbow. I don't know why they don't pick ones that go together, but, and it's really hard to color that way and get the shading that is so special about alcohol ink markers. So that is my best tip for if you want to build your stash is try to find them on sale throughout the year. They are offered on sale. Um, Simon, usually a couple times a year at least offers Copics on sale, which is great. Um, I, you know, I haven't even checked Hobby Lobby in a long time. I don't know if they still carry them or not, but if they do, it's a great time to use your coupon to help build or, you know, build your stash there. Um, so anyway, that is how I built up my stash of markers. And even at that, some of mine really, I think I need new tips for them. I have used them so, so much. I went with a little bit darker colors than what I normally use, which might sound a little funny because we've got some reds and then some aqua, but the colors in those color families and the greens are all the deeper, more jewel tone, I would call them, rather than rainbow and you know, primary or pastel. Um, a lot of times I gravitate towards those, but these are some of my favorite color combinations. If you wanna do more jewel tone, autumn colors, which I know I've shared some videos lately with autumn colors, so you've probably seen me use these. And then um, even my yellows, they're not bright yellows. I use the yellow reds 
and I think they have a great autumn tint to them. The only thing I use that's really really aqua is the color for the clouds which is only around the edge of the cloud to give them a little bit of texture um, and not color the whole thing in. For the little boy's hat and shirt the teal color combination I used is a much deeper darker one that I really really like and it goes great with the darker reds and then the denim I used for his shorts. These are such cute images. I just love these. And I did notice, I believe the Inkblot shop just had um, their latest release. And these kids would go great with some of the other stamp sets that I just saw from their release. So if you kind of want to mix and match and do some really fun things there, Definitely check this out. Maybe check out the release and see all of the new stamps and dies from the Inkblot shop. They have some really, really cute stuff. I know I just had personally placed an order here maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I don't know, um, and got quite a few fun backgrounds from them, like some airplanes and thing, paper airplanes and um, envelopes, and I can't wait to use those. Some really fun background stamps. I love the little bed rolls on their back and then the little backpacks, um, socks, little shoes, his little walking stick. I mean, they're just so stinking cute. We're going to pull in a little red on him with a backpack. Her backpack I'm doing in a gray. I did both of the little bed rolls in E43 and 44, so a different brown color combination than what I used for hair. And then looks like all we have left basically is the tent. And I opted to do kind of a yellow orange for the tent. It's actually the colors that I like to use for pumpkins. And I like it because again, it's a yellow red. So it's a little deeper than a bright orange. Oh, I forgot. We have the little brim of her hat. And then I did like a little light gray for the rest of her hat and her backpack. Then we will color in the tent. And that's warm gray 0, 0, 2, 4, and 5. I used different combinations of those for the different areas. And I even went back with a little bit darker, the warm gray 5. I felt like I needed to darken up a couple little spots. Just a little bit, a little more shading, a little more shadow. We're going to do a nice base for the tint in YR30, then start shading in with a lot of YR31. We're going to pull in a little YR24. I think I started with YR, no, maybe I didn't. I was going to say I thought I used some YR23, but I really like the 24 and 27 when I'm going towards the orange end of the spectrum rather than more yellowish, like I did for the moon or for the hat and stars. And then that's about it. We have got our image all colored and the Distress Ink should be dry now. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add black gel pen detail to the eyes. I'm gonna add a little white pen detail, not a ton, just a little bit here and there. And then when the eyes are completely dry, I don't know if I did it on camera or not, but I did go back in with my white pen on top of the black and add in some little highlights but we can add our greetings. I thought maybe I could stamp them both at once, but I don't think I can get them quite as close together as I want to if I do them together. So we're actually gonna start with one greeting. I think I did the big one, the longer one first. Life is an adventure, which is a beautiful, fun, really um, loopy, I guess I want to say, script. I like this. I think it's a little bit different than you see from some stamp sets. Very, very cute. I'm going to stamp that, that perfect little spot that we made when we built our scene. I'm going to use the clear embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp for that and sprinkle on my embossing powder. Now, I do think there were a couple spots that my embossing powder stuck, so I'm taking a dry paintbrush and I'm removing those 
because I don't want any little stray embossing flakes anywhere, kind of ruining the look of my card. And then I think I got a little too aggressive with my paintbrush and removed too much, so I'm gonna sprinkle on a little more embossing powder. It's worth the extra little bit of effort to take your paintbrush and remove those stray flakes. When I have that cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss that sentiment. And then we can take our second phrase, which I chose to use, you are going places, and we're gonna buddy it up close to the large sentiment phrase and stamp and emboss that. And I love the bright white on that dark blue background ties into the clouds. It's going to tie in really nicely to the border of our card. Um, the slimline nested rectangle die is a little bit smaller than the three and a half by eight and a half. So it's probably three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And so it's going to leave a nice white border all the way around and it just ties together really nicely. We only have a few small finishing details to do now. Once we have that done, or the greetings in place, finishing details. So remember I was talking about the stars and how I did not want to try to mask those and color them in. We're actually gonna just scatter those throughout the design. I'm gonna grab quite a few of these. I think there's the one has two stars together and then another little one. And then we're gonna use a, like a medium and a small over on the left of the card. We're gonna stamp them all at once using the Misty. That is the beauty of using the Misty is you can kind of play around with a placement. Um, lay them all out and stamp them all at once. Again, using the clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. And then once we have that done, we can fill in the stars. You can leave them as is. It's completely up to you what you want to do here. I wanted to add a little touch of sparkle because this is a flat card. I mean, as many layers and uh, that we've created here with the stamping and the masking and the inking and the coloring and, and embossing, um, I wanted to add a little bit of interest to this. So we're going to take Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard and add them to the center of those stars and when it dries it's going to be an iridescent sparkle so it's still going to show the blue through them but have a little sparkly effect in that pretty camp night sky and i think my bottle clogged a little bit so we're just going to unclog the tip with a straight pin i keep one handy because it happens. And it only takes a super teeny tiny little bit to fill in the centers of those stars. I took a fine tip black pen and I gave our little girl some eyelashes. I always think that's kind of fun. I'll hold that up and maybe you can see it a little bit better. So cute. And I did add the white highlights back into their eyes. And then we're gonna just take a little liquid adhesive and scatter teeny tiny drops around the card and take some of these little silver mini star confetti and fill in the sky. I didn't wanna stamp and emboss a zillion stars from the set, so I stamped a few and then we can fill in with these little silver stars, which gives a nice assortment, a nice little different bit of sparkle and fun and really Fun way to finish off the card. Plus, I have this little blue heart accent. I really love the little, they're not really clear. They're more kind of a translucent heart, but putting it on a dark background is really just gonna give it more texture than color. And we're just gonna put that little blue icy heart underneath our stamped sentiments down there along the bottom of the card. And then I'm going to trim an eight and a half by 11 white cardstock panel to seven by eight and a half inches. So we'll just cut off a little bit there from the long side of the cardstock, score it in half at three and a half inches to create our card base. And then we're gonna glue our panel to a slimline card base to finish off the card design. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this stamp timber card featuring the exclusive Ink Blot Shop Life is an Adventure stamp set. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Simon Says Stamp that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.